Okay, silence. Silence because it's science time. <laughs> uh, we're talking about today. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of a way I ought to label this. Let's call this um, communication in electromagnetic waves. Very quickly, someone, raise your hand so that you can remind me. The question is, remind me, what is an electromagnetic wave? I think... Ooh, yes, Cyrus. Uh, it's an electromagnetic wave that it can, doesn't have to travel through a medium. It can travel through a vacuum of space. Okay. Electromagnetic waves can travel through the vacuum of space. So they are not mechanical waves, right? They can travel through the vacuum of space. Uh, there's a simpler word that we use to say the one word that describes electromagnetic waves that encompasses all of them is what? They're all what kind of waves? Light. Yeah, they're all light waves. Right? And we, we talked in the last couple of lessons about how there are different kinds of light based on their properties of the waves. Right? Different lights have different frequencies, they have different uh, wavelengths, and they have different energies. They also have different amplitudes. Um, we talked about all that, and so you're going to use that knowledge again. But now we're talking specifically about how human beings communicate using electromagnetic waves. The first thing that we need to discuss is this idea of communication in general. I'm not going to define communications because I think you know what communication is, right? Like if I say, uh, communicate with your partner. I'm not saying that right now. Please don't do that. But if, you were, if I were to tell you to communicate with your partner, you know that that means effectively just talk to you, right? Um, there are other ways people communicate besides talking. Just real quick, even though we're not defining it, let's talk about what are some ways that human beings can communicate besides talking, right? Talking is the most common. What else, Peyton? Phone. Yeah, you can communicate by your cell phone or a regular phone. Like Sorry. radio. Yep, radios. What else? How else would people communicate? Sign yeah. language. Sign language. Hearing. Action. Your ears. Yeah, your actions. Like if, if I'm, you would know very well what it meant if I came in here and I said, "Do you guys have your assignments done?" And you all said no, and I just went like this. You would, right? you would know what I meant, right? I'm communicating. I haven't said anything, but I'm communicating, right? Because you said. There's lots of ways that people communicate. Uh, if you hug your grandma, that's a communication, right? You're saying, you're saying, uh, okay, <laughs> communication, communication, I'm so sorry, Cyrus, that, that must have been heartbreaking for you. Communication is just when human beings are able to convey some information to another, right? And that's the point of what we're talking about here. Um, we could say the communication is the conveyance, this is going to make it even more complicated, of information. Where does the information come from? No? The information, itself, yeah, the information itself comes from your brain, right? I, and I've never really thought about this before until I was, I'm about to teach you guys this, but this information comes from your brain. Is it possible to convey that information purely? Like, can you make someone else think what you are thinking in your brain? Can you no. give someone else your information? No. 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 You can't really. You can try. You can say it. You can hug it. Right? You can type it in a text message, but there's no way to purely transfer what you're thinking to another person's brain. So we use this idea that to convey it, we must do this process of encoding. We've talked about coding itself in uh, robotics, right? We've done robots where we coded the little zero, right? Yeah. All information that you pass on is encoded. There's no way to make a pure thought go from my mind to your mind. And so I have to encode that. And how, right now, how am I encoding that information? Oh, yeah, through words, right? So, so words are an example of encoding information. How else can we encode information? Right? If we think about the information as, this is the word your book uses, is a signal. The information that you drum up in your brain is the signal. How else can we encode that signal? Yeah, writing. I'm going to stop putting parentheses around them because it'll make it faster if I don't. What else? Let's just list some. Actions. Actions. I'm going to put hugging. Hugging. Yeah, because that's an encoding, right? If the signal is, I love you, I can encode that in a hug, right? Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, staring. Staring, yeah. Both of these fall into the category of what I would call body language. What else? Sign language. Sign language. Yeah, that's an Sign language. In fact, this is so ingrained in our, let's stop there, but um, this is so ingrained in our, actually let's leave, let's put also here texting. Texting, you guys know about texting. 
Yeah. Well, let's put, in order to get with the times, let's put snapping. Is that what you guys call snapping? Yeah. Shut up, I don't care. Okay. Um, <laughs> all of these are ways that we encode signals, right? A signal in my brain might be, what a cute dog. And so then I'm going to take a picture of the dog and send it to my wife, and that's encoded, right? The information has been encoded. Um, this is so ingrained in our brain that a lot of times we think about, like if I were to talk to you in Spanish, si, like, okay. si yo hablo a ti en español, right? You think of that. In fact, it's still in my brain, I kind of speak Spanish, and in my brain I still kind of think of it as code, right? Like I, I switch the English words I want to say for Spanish words, like a code, when you right? Say it. I said, if I talk to you in Spanish. Um, no, right, but we still, we often think about other languages as just code for English, which is not the case, right? You understand, and this is something that people don't always get, but like, you understand that if you hear someone talk Italian, they're not thinking in English and then switching it to Italian. They're, they're thinking in Italian, right? The signal in their brain is in Italian, just like the signal in your brain is in English. Um, and we just, we have to encode that information because really the signal in your brain is not in English. Even your brain encodes it. When you think in your head in words, your brain is encoding the things it's doing into English for you. And then the English is bit, can be passed on to other people. Peyton. So I've got a question. Okay. And it's gone to Spanish, look to Spanish. So tell me if I'm saying this right. Mi nombre es Peyton Brave. Yeah, you wouldn't say that. I mean, yeah, you're saying my name is Peyton Brave, but that's fine. Okay, that's Normally in, in Spanish, this is not the point. That's possible we say me llamo Peyton Brave, which is you would say I am called. In the same way that like in English we don't normally say I'm called Peyton. You could, but that's not usual. In the same way in Spanish you do say me llamo Peyton instead of mi nombre es Peyton, as I understand it. Anyhow, we have a signal, and the signal must be encoded in order to pass it on to other people. That's called communication. You with me so far? Yes, sir. Yes. Questions? No. What? I said no. No, no question. Okay. Yeah. Another way that we can, to, to relate this back to what we had talked about in the last chapters, another way we can encode this information is through electromagnetic waves. Right, we can communicate through electromagnetic waves. Specifically, in this one, both texting and snapping both testing and snapping <laughs> are encoded in microwaves, right? When you type your little, I love you so much, please don't break up with me. When you, when you, type, that, when you type that in, when you type that in and you press send, which is a mistake, don't ever send that. When you press send, it encodes, your phone encodes that into a microwave, which is a type of electromagnetic wave, sends it to the cell phone tower, the cell phone tower re-encodes it, sends it to the other person's cell phone, and they look at it and they go, ugh. <laughs> um, but that's all done by electromagnetic wave, right? And so, you have kind of a basic understanding of electromagnetic waves. It might seem to you like we use, like, you know, microwave. We have a microwave oven. There's all different kinds of frequencies, right? Frequencies. What else is true about, what, else, what other properties do magnetic waves have? Electromagnetic waves have? Uh, um, uh, they're, the rest, uh, they're, they're fast. Okay, they have a speed. Yeah, speed. What other properties do electromagnetic waves have? They have frequencies, they have speed. Uh, amplitude. Amplitude? Uh, Wavelength. Yeah. Crest, you were thinking Crest, of. Yeah. Wavelength. So these are the properties that they have, some of the properties. Uh, so how come... If they're all sent by microwaves, how come my texting my wife, what do you want for dinner, and Leo saying, I love you so much, please don't break up with me, how come those two things, how are they different, right? They're both microwaves, how are they different? Wait, who is Leo? No, listen, listen, how are they, how are they different? Because they have different One of these things must be changed. Another word for change is this word, write this down please, modulation. Have you ever, um, this is maybe old timey to you, but have you ever seen this? Yeah. yeah. What is this referring to? to radio. Radio. The radio. The radio. What we call the radio, right? Which is radio waves that are transmitted through matter or space and get to your radio, right? Your little the device called a radio, and it makes that into sound. This, write the sound, please. AM stands for amplitude modulation. FM stands for, can you guess? Frequency, Frequency modulation. So if we if we switch our, our stereo to AM radio, what would be what would be different about 
the AM radio on band 700 and the AM radio on band 750. What's going to be different about this? Amplitude. The amplitude. The amplitude is different about them. Thank you, Peyton. If we, if we switch our FM radio from B94.7 to 107.7, because we were tired of listening to that pop music and we listened to some terrible rap, I mean rock, what are we changing about right? We turn the knob, but what are we changing? We're changing the frequency, right? So AM radio, no, no, no. AM radio, AM radio, when you change the knob, adjusts the amplitude of the, of the radio waves. FM radio adjusts the frequency. On your phone, when you send a text message, I'm not sure which one of these things it is that's modified, but one of those things is modulated, which is why Leo's awful, heartbreaking text message is expressed differently into a different person than my normal text message to a normal person from a normal person. Kiana, did you have a question? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought you had a question. Hey, did you have a question? Yeah, but also, AM radio sucks. Not necessarily. Yeah, you can um, never get, like, you can never get a good like, channel, dude, I swear. Okay, now, uh, that's, so, this is not where really the goal of today, but AM radio is different. It travels generally over longer differences, but it's frequency, or sorry, it's, it's uh, are you listening to me, Paige? I'm answering your question, so please sorry. pay me attention. Um, the reason you think that AM radio is true, that's kind of, it's an older technology because the amplitude modulation is easier. Uh, it can go over longer distances and it go, can go through more landforms, but it's more easily degraded by like sunlight, for instance, or if it goes through something. And so a lot of times, even though the signal itself can travel further with AM radio, uh, it might not be good quality, even very close to the source. And so you think of AM radio as bad because it sounds, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. Do you know, what, what, what might we call that? If you hear, if you switch it to the radio and it just goes, yeah. Static. Static, what else might we call it? A disruption. <laughs> Maybe. I might call it noise, and we're going to talk about noise in a second here. But first, we're going to talk about analog versus digital. You've heard of these words before. Analog, listen please. Analog versus digital. Have you heard of both of those things? Mm -hmm. No. Well, You've heard of them. Where, you, where have you heard of these things, a, a, a device that can be one of these two ways? An analog something and a digital something that became oh, different. A digital something. Computer. Radio. 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 Yeah, technically you're right, Justice. There are analog and digital radios. There's a much more common device clock. that you can go to the store and buy. Yeah, an analog or a digital version. Say it louder, Tiana. A clock. Can you find an analog clock in this room? No. Yes. Yes, it's right there. Can you find a digital clock in this room? Yes, it's right I have one on my wrist. Yeah. Analog versus digital. Okay, uh, analog, sometimes we think of these things as like, old technology versus new, but that's not quite the case. Um, look with me, there's a nice little diagram you can look at on page 109 or on your, where I'm on exploration one of unit two, lesson two. Unit two, lesson two, exploration one. Um, but I'm also gonna describe this so that people watching the video, hopefully Rhett, hopefully Golden, um, will be able to understand without having to look at their Chromebook. But uh, anyway, analog is, the analogy for it is like a water glass being filled up. Oh my God. There's a, there's a bottle, and it's filling up the water glass. You can put in some water. You can have any amount of water in this glass between the bottom and the top, right? Any amount. It's, it's sometimes what we call a spectrum. It's, you can, you can, can you have this much water? Yeah. Can you have this much water? Yeah. Can you have this much water? Yeah. Yeah, of course you can, right? Whereas the digital, it uses a little, like, pouring some grains into a bowl. Oh, here we have some grains. And each, oh. what's, what's different about this? It has more, it can hold, it looks like it holds more. Well, maybe, but that's not kind of, that's not really the point. Whereas this, you could have really any amount. This, the individual grains determine how much you can have, right? So like, like you, you can have 150 grains, you can have 151 grains, but not anything in between them, right? You could break them, but the point is that this is made of what we call discrete, which kind of means separate pieces. Whereas this is continuous. So analog is continuous and digital is made of discrete or separate pieces. Another example, probably a better example uh, in my opinion, is on the page before or if you scroll up in your exploration a little bit. There's, there's a digital thermometer with a readout of 25.1 degrees Celsius and then there's a analog thermometer which is also at 25.1 degrees Celsius. 
But listen, if it if it warmed up a tiny, tiny bit, would the analog thermometer show that? Yeah, it would get a tiny bit higher. Would the digital thermometer show that? Well, maybe, but only if it goes up a whole nother one all the way to two. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in the same way that these we can only increase by one grain, this can only go up by a tenth of a degree Celsius. Whereas this is continuous. It can be any amount in between. Does this make any sense to you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, just speaking about thermometers, at my uh, ranch house, it got down to negative 22 oh. a couple days ago. That yeah, that really... And then it's, it's with, awesome. the, with the wind chill, it was negative 40. That's, that's really... That is sad. What's interesting about negative 40, it's the, one, it's the one temperature you don't have to say degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit, because that's the temperature at which those two scales meet. This is just a side note. But negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit equals negative 40 degrees Celsius. So if it's negative 40 out, you can take that one privilege to not say a unit because it's the same in both. Okay, let's, let's draw a little, in order to make this clearer, let's draw two graphs. A graph of an analog signal would look continuous, maybe even curved, right? Whereas a graph of a digital signal would have discrete, right, separate steps. A thing can be at position X or Y, but it can't be in between them. Whereas on this, it can be at any point. This is the third example. Does this kind of make sense? Yeah. yeah. The reason this is important signals is because signals can be either digital, meaning they have discrete sections, or analog, meaning they're continuous. Look with me at page 113 now. Or on your uh, Chromebook, you can look up. We're looking at analog carrier waves. So this is kind of putting together all the stuff we've talked about. So an analog wave, which is continuous, is shown on page 113. Are you with me? Oh, I'm also sorry. On your Chromebook, I'm on exploration two oh, wow. in lesson two of unit two. Two, two, two. Two, two, two? Yeah. Um, of module L. So L222. Two, two, two. Anyway, so we have an analog wave there, right? An electromagnetic analog wave, which is continuous, right? It's going um, And in the second one, there's a signal we're going to send. And then the third one you can see is a modulated. What what does it mean to modulate something? To, to do what with it? What's modulate mean? Like change, to change it. Okay, so looking at the diagram, how, first of all, and what we talked about, how was this wave modulated? What 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 uh, property of the wave was modulated in that diagram? It looks like this. No? Amplitude. The amplitude, right? It gets taller and then shorter. That's amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation. Now we go to the next one, which is digital. So the digital signal that would be sent, the same, it's the same carrier wave. They're both carried by electromagnetic waves, which have frequency, speed, amplitude, and wavelength. But in this case, the digital signal, do you see that? What's it look like? Instead of being continuous like this one is, what does it look like? Um, it looks like a... Do, do. Yep, it's either it's either high, high, high amplitude or very, very low amplitude. Yeah. High, high, high or very, very low, right? There's, it's basically either on or off, and that's what's true about digital. Have you ever seen binary code where it would be like 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0? Yeah, yeah, that's binary code. The ones mean on, the zeros mean off. The high amplitude means on, the low amplitude means off. Whereas with this, it's continuous, right? So analog continuous digital, discrete, or separate. Last thing we're going to talk about is noise. Now look with me on exploration three. Noise, what is noise? You know about what noise is. You cause noise. Yeah, yeah. it's like so, it's, it's, it's what? How can we define noise? In our daily life, what is noise? It's Yeah. What's different about noise from regular sound? It has different frequencies. Not necessarily. Don't you don't you don't you find don't you find that the that something that might seem to you like uh, music even you might even like it or someone talking which you might be interested in at other times maybe if you're trying to sleep sounds like noise right mm -hmm. so it's not it's not something true it's not something a property of that sound we're usually talking about sound noise what's true about the noise what do we what's what makes it noise instead of normal regular sound. Well, 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 it depends on you, right? It depends on whether you want it or not. So we can define define noise, write this down. We can define noise as an unwanted, using our information from before, using unwanted, it's some kind of unwanted signal. It's some kind of unwanted signal. 
committed. Right now, Justice. Noise is an unwanted signal. Right. So sometimes I want you guys to talk. Right. Like if I say, "What do you think about this?" and you all raise your hands, and I call on one of you, I want you to talk. Other times, you're just talking all the time, and that's noise because it's unwanted. I don't want it, so it's unwanted, and that makes it noise. The uh, I'm going to erase something up here so we have a little bit more room. Noise exists in electromagnetic waves too. If we have an analog carrier wave that we, we want it to look like this, maybe this is a text message in the microwave frequency that says, please come back, baby. Right? Theo. Theo. Yeah. Yeah. But there's always going to be noise. There's always noise from, from the sun, from the cosmic background, from cars passing by. There's always going to be noise. And so the noise is kind of constantly in the background. So this is the wave we want to send. This is what the noise looks like. And so the wave that ends up getting sent is the same kind of shape, but it's, there's a better drawing of this in your book, but it's got the noise in it, right? A digital signal, like I said, this is an analog signal. This might make it sound, this is why Payton won't listen to the AM radio, because the noise comes through and it makes it sound like, even on FM radio, you do hear noise because there's electromagnetic waves coming in from everywhere. It might not be as severe as it is on the, uh, AM radio, but even on the FM radio, you hear noise. Not all of them, though. In a digital signal, in a digital signal, remember the digital signal is going to look like either on or off, right? Yeah. Well, I should make these a little bit shorter. There. Either on or off. On when it's up high, off when it's down low. There's still some noise. Yeah. Right? And so now these are going to look like. Right, there's still noise. But then what happens is your cell phone picks up, even though it's noisy, it's like, oh, on. Oh, on. Even though it's still noisy, off. And so unless it's too noisy for this to even be discerned, your cell phone still says, hey, baby, come back. And then you go, what does this guy want? I'm just going to throw my phone away because he keeps texting me these things. <laughs> but that's, the, that's why the digital kind of, that's why digital has become the standard because for a greater distance, with a digital signal, are you listening? Yeah. yeah. For a greater distance from the source, with a digital signal, it'll still come through. Basically, there will be an area around a cell phone tower where if you're anywhere in here, the, the signal will be fine. And then as soon as you're one step outside of that, no signal, you, don't, you aren't going to get the message, right? Whereas with analog, it kind of fades out over time. Once again, digital is discrete, separate, just like this. If I'm here, no way. Yeah. If I'm here, okay. Whereas analog is continuous, right? The further I get away, the worse the signal is, but it's never going to shut off all at once. Yeah. Do you have questions about any of this? This is all about communication and how it relates to the wave properties we've learned about. Do you have questions about it? Someone have a question. Now show me you were paying at least one tiny bit of attention. Were you paying attention? Yeah, I was. Okay, good. I have no question. I don't know about them, but I was. I need to to prove it. Does anyone have a question? No, I don't. I've got, I have to prove that. Does anyone have a question? Hey. Okay, so AM, so how, why can a AM, uh, like an amplitude uh, modulation, travel farther than the frequency modulation? I think it's because they all use a frequency that's lower than the frequency modulation. It might also be higher. It basically, the frequency that AM radio uses is different in one way or the other, I think lower, than the frequency modulation bands. Um, and it has to be that way because all amplitude, sorry, all AM radio, all amplitude modulation radio has the same or similar frequency. So it can, it has a certain property where it can go through stuff. Um, and then what's changing about it from one band to the next is the amplitude. You might even sometimes have noticed, uh, some radios will display this. Like if you listen to the B94.7 The Blast, if you listen to that, that's a fine radio station. I don't know why I made that face. Sometimes I listen to it. But if you're listening to that radio station, um, on your on your car radio, it, you, it might even show up as this. And it might have this at the end. And that MHZ, can you guess what the HZ stands for? Hertz, because it's frequency modulation. The capital M stands for mega. This means that the frequency of that radio wave is 94.7 megahertz, meaning 94.7 million hertz, meaning every second a million waves are passing through it. Well, every second 94.7 million waves are passing through it. So when you change to 107.7 to listen to that Pop. hard rock, right? Now you've increased the frequency from 94.7 million waves a second to 107.7 million waves a second. 
Yeah. If you look at AM radio, it's going to be something like 700. It'll probably just say 700, but I think it means 700 nanometers. That might not be right. Maybe it's 700 millimeters. I don't know. It's going to be some length because what's changing about this is the height of the wave. It might be nanometers. I really don't know. Um, but they usually don't abbreviate or label the unit on that. Other questions? Thank you, Peyton. What's your question, Angie? What's your question, Leo? Um, you know how they go, when they go live on the radio, and doesn't that like a second off when it goes through to get to your radio? To yeah, yeah, because of the, so your question was, doesn't it take a while for the radio wave when it's sent to get to you in your radio? Okay. Yeah, it does, because the speed of light is very, very fast, but it's not infinite. So it's going to take a, at least maybe even up to a couple of seconds to get from the radio station where the signal is being released to your radio. And sometimes they even, I think what you also might be talking about is that sometimes they even uh, will record something and then edit it a little bit and then send it off, which will take even longer, of course. The tube. So, yeah. The tube. Okay.